Mm -mm. Uh, uh. Okay. <clears throat> uh, uh. Right. So um, let's do the review of your uh, portfolio submission. So um, everybody uh, really uh, well done for your um, portfolio submission. And we got about um, most of the students uh, submit the, uh, your work and I review some of them and we'll finish soon. Um, but today's class, we will review uh, together with your portfolio. And also we will continue to do this in the um, in lectures as well and see um, what we missed in the portfolio and what we can uh, improve um, with the feedbacks, right? So before we heading into uh, portfolio submission, uh, uh, okay, so we have a portfolio submission review. So everyone well done for um, submitting your uh, work um, was intense, but um, students done really well. And um, things definitely has to be improved in certain points. And also, um, you know, some of the figures or some of the contents are um, considered um, as a um, feedback requirement. So uh, what we are doing today and also uh, ongoing classes, we will continue to discuss a uh, review of your um, portfolio submission and what we can um, you know, implement in our portfolio and also what we can do uh, some you know, improvement with the feedbacks as well. So before we heading into uh, your portfolio submission, um, the first thing I want to see with you is the, um, you know, the instruction and the guide of the portfolio of this year, right? So instruction was we first set up the uh, portfolio questions. And I mean, most of students done this well. And after that, we create the um, R notebook for your submissions. So um, this is has to be in an art notebook as you done in the um, your assignment. And it has to include um, plots and also code for the data munging and plot and also description about your questions and finding, right? And also um, the, you know, if you can add some terms uh, throughout your learning on the assignments that would be great as well okay and also uh the things you have to check you had to check was the number of plots in the assignment and we limited it to two figures so we're not going to accept more than two figures but you can create the multi-panel uh, plots like you know you use the facet wrap or car plot and the assignment has to be written in English and submission through the TA, I think is all working uh, by students and submission format PDF, that is fine. And the file name has to be student's name underscore and your name in English, right? Um, and then um, the submission due date is the uh, yesterday. So, I mean, uh, um, I think it, it's all um, done by students as well. So what would be the uh, evaluation criteria? So we are looking at the five different um, evaluation um, criteria. So first one is accuracy. So we are testing how well you describe the data set related to your questions in an R notebook and whether you understand the aim and method of the data set and utilize the data set accurately, right? And the second section is the flowing data. So whether you, your code is based on tidyverse, you know, we spend most of time for our learning. 
and also whether the code is briefly and efficiently written for the task. And the third one is the storytelling with the data, right? So first one is you have to think about the readability because um, this is basically the things you want to show to others, right? So you have to think about whether your uh, portfolio is really you know, readable. So it has to be easy to get some meaning. And also we evaluate whether you fully utilize the data set to demonstrate your question. And also we are thinking novelty of your question. So, you know, I encourage you not setting up the simple questions for your analysis, right? So if you have complicated and also if you're dealing with the multiple dimensions for your um, assignments, and that would be, you know, the high score. And also readability of your plot. Um, this is again the same. So how you summarize the information into your plots. And the last one is the right visual format. So whether you use the right colors and right scales and you know right data format, right? And also that has to be coherently. Uh, make up into your visualization too. So all of things is up to 100%. And each section you will get A, B, C grade. In A grade, you will get all the scores and the um, B grade and C grade, we will subsequently uh, reduce the scores, right? Okay, so um, that was it. Uh, and also compare with the uh, previous years, I mean, we used the same, almost the same amount of, um, you know, the papers and data sets. So this year we used the Sapathy paper and we used the same, you know, criteria and we used the same uh, multiomics paper, but in a different um, cohort. So this, in last year, we used the Asian cohort, and this year we used the international cohort, and the data size is almost similar. So, I mean, you can basically compare uh, the quality of the portfolio between, you know, this year and, um, and previous years. Okay, so that was it. <clears throat> so let's let's go through one by one. So... First one is submit by Sumin, and uh, um, the portfolio was about the analysis of protein overexpression and upregulation in RNA postpolation and acetylation level, right? And it has the introduction and then about the data munging, the converting data set. And, and the visualization. So what <clears throat> this person want to uh, show is, okay, let's see, remarkable differences in protein expression in tumor and NAT that's shown in this paper. And while looking at 500 proteins significantly overexpressed in tumors, there are differences where the protein was also significantly unregulated RNA, phosphorylation, acetylation. So basically when I look at <coughs> overexpressed protein, but also the pattern is preserved in RNA, phosphorylation and acetylation, right? Uh, okay, so that was sort of, um, that was sort of the aim. Uh, okay, so let's see whether that is um, sufficient to deliver the idea. So first one is RNA evidence and significant and insignificant. Um, at a first look, um, I don't know what is the differences between the significant and insignificant in this criteria. Uh, okay. 
and post poor evidence. Um, it has to be post poor space and evidence, and post poor is not really correct term. It has to be post correlation evidence or just the post correlation. Here is acid. Um, okay. <laughs> evidence right so um title is um it's not really successful in delivering the message okay so what is the significant uh let's look at it okay so the data comes from this table and i mean it would be great if you put what this table means you can just put the comments here and we up you know, we load some data set about, you know, um, uh, you know, which information, right? Because no one gonna understand this table unless you open the file, right? This visualization format will be, um, you know, seen by others who not access to computers as well, right? So it would be great if you put some information in here, right? And, uh, convert to data frame. I don't know why this is required because the read Excel already, you know, import the data into the, you know, uh, table format. So you don't have to uh, convert into the data frame. Okay, so then select the signed FTR and gene and RNA evidence. And, um, and some of the FDR, uh, oh, so okay. So this person try uh, change the FDR into the numbers, right? And I don't know whether this is really correct. Uh, okay, let's look at this one first. And... Is this the seventh? <clears throat> What was the seven B? Okay, that was the seven B. And is this really not imported as numbers? I'm not sure. So let's look at it together. Mm -hmm. Library. Videos. Where my redex? Speed diamond. This the sepati. There was the seventh. <clears throat> Okay, so D signed F R. Yeah. No, it's it's actually it's a it's actually a lady uh, numbers, right? So you don't have to change it to numbers. And what is the RNA evidence? Okay, so the the authors use the RNA evidence for their column name and phosphor evidence and AC evidence, right? But this doesn't really make a um exclusion, right? When you plot the um your visuals, right? So you can you can actually change to you know whatever the acetylation or phosphorylation. You can you can update the uh, figures for the better readability, right? Okay, so what they're doing is so selecting the RNA evidence and see whether that is the uh, yes or no. Mm. And then plot the sign FDR from this information, right? And put the Unsignificant one, right? 
So uh, basically, um, this portfolio use very simple information, right? I mean, it doesn't have really complicated um, story out of this, right? Just load uh, one data set and put it into one, two, three, four columns into, um, into the portfolio, right? And I don't know the exact um, the conclusion we can draw out of this portfolio, right? Because it's already it's already the author's report that you know some of RNA or post four as still has the significant overlap with the proteins. So I mean it doesn't have more that information than just the authors mentioned in the papers, right? And we don't know the information about, you know, which genes are actually making both significant um, in a two data set, right? So, uh, okay. So let me, let me check the... Portfolio here. That is, uh, that is two zero two zero. It's a zoom in. Okay. Okay, so let's see um, the next uh, portfolio. So it's submitted by uh, Sang Yun. And uh, let's see the background together. So smoking known to cause various diseases, including uh, lung cancers, and now major risk, uh, they harm not only the hair, secondhand smokers, right? Okay, secondhand smoker. Uh, and the proportion increase this one. Okay, so that is the background. And he used the data set from uh, this website. Link. And then, okay, so data set downloaded from um, this one. So what he tries to do is aims reading this paper, uh, reformed smokers with lung cancers, um, table one, the girl reformed that only 15 years. Okay, so that is the definition of the one. Compare the occurrence mutation in smokers who are not exposed to secondary smokers. Uh -huh, okay. So, so basically, the person does this students wants to compare the information from reformed smokers, and reformed smokers by definition is the person that smoked in the past fifteen years, or more than fifteen years, right? But the students assume that some of them was exposed to secondhand smoke, right? Okay, so how can you find secondhand smoke out of this data set? So tidyverse, lead the data set. Secondhand smoke information. Okay, that is interesting. And then C1. What was the data? The second shit. Second hand smoking is really okay. So here is second hand smoke. That is great. It has that information. Okay. Tumor mutation count. Okay. So what want to compare the comparison? It's the occurrence of the mutation. Okay, so in a reformed 
uh, passive smokers versus smokers, right? Okay, so that was the that information. And also the density plot to smoking scores and also the conclusion. So the question was fine, question was okay, but the complexity of the utilized data set is quite simple because just one um, dimension, just use the sample information and, and mutation counts. I mean, I mean, it would be great if you can compare with other, you know, protein expression, post-polation expression, um, or the interaction between, you know, some expression with the mutation counts in a smoking person versus secondhand smoking person. Then that would be, you know, much better, um, you know, uh, interpretation in your portfolio. So, yeah, I mean, that they, they could be improved. Um, in this case. Okay, so let's see the next one. It's by uh, Xiuan Che. So this is the background. So LSCC is this one. And uh, LSCC classified into three sets of tumors representing hot, warm, and cold clusters, right? So um, that is uh, also reported in the paper. So um, this person tries to define what that is. So hot tumor and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that is good. E genes, uh, e genes represent the gene expression due genetic variant. Okay, if the amount of gene expression changes, the protein protein changes, okay. Therefore, the finding of which E genes causing genetic variation can make possible to develop treatment for them. So what this portfolio wanna do is observe the data visualization to things first and E gene mainly contribute to different expression three types of tumors, hot one called tumors, and but plot chosen to plot the table of comparison between them. Also, some genes are shown both sides of table, according different types percentage. Okay, so it's by E gene. So M six data set and rate of CCQTL E genes differentially expressing even between three types of tumors. Okay, that is that is fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the call names, let's look at this one together. Where was it? The oh, six, three, three K. Okay, so we get an easing from here and that information too. So that's six K one, two, three, one, two, three. So why this person uh, did rename columns like this? Because uh, first one is, um, you can just skip when you read, uh, you can just skip the rules when you uh, read the Excel file, right? So what this means is you when you read this one, let's say K3, you don't have to read this one, right? The first line. So you can just put the, skip and one, then that will give you the data frame start from here. So you don't have to uh, rename the columns, right? So this is the, again, the same issues that students didn't, you know, not really reading the, the questions by others, right? So if you go to Slack and we have huge number of discussion going on here and surprisingly, um, I mean, this is like a, uh, it's almost like a service center, right? This is like a customer center, right? This is more like a classroom discussion. So if you go here, then we left these questions. So here it is, right? So this is the actually uh, other students observed that issue too. So you don't have to 
you don't have to rename every columns like this. You can just update uh, the your quote to just skip those lines, right? So again, um, this is a bit, you know, pity, right? So, um, I mean, uh, all the students read the, the questions activities. So I don't know what is the points we are using Slack in this semester, right? So, um, I mean, if that is improved, then code is much better. And also the problem is that when you read in these types of um, parameters, we're not sure about whether your data loaded properly or not, right? So you, you, the things you have to check first is when you load your data set, it loaded as expected or as intended or not, right? So this case, um, definitely we're not sure about that, right? Okay, so E is by the proportion. Now how we make the proportion is the person read the A, B, C. And A was eaten by mutated count hundred and seventy five. There was there was this one. Immune group. What is the two hot versus tumor? And is the PQTR protein? And this is the EQTR, so RNA and protein. Okay, figure out easy and show common differentially between the condition. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so we don't have to write the code like this. We can just do a uh, percentage. Right, so just to ease in, what was the ALG11, GBP3, CHST3, and something like this, right? Then we can put all others, right? So that was it. Um, And the, the visualization is rate of CCQTR differentially expressing immune between three types of tumor. Okay. Easiness. and hot tumors. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a little bit confused. Um, so this is the A is EQTL, CCQTL. Okay, so K1 is about, so K1, the person used, <clears throat> it was about the, uh, it was about the mutation, I guess. Uh, it was about the uh, gene and protein in an immune groups, right? So all three immune groups, and this K2 and K3, K2 is about RNA and K3 is about protein, but it's comparing the hot versus cold, right? So what this person wanna address in here, so 
through the visualization, easing contribute to three types of tumors, right? And some genes, both sides of tables. What is the both sides of tables? Okay, so what was it? So A is about the three types of um, the tumors, uh, three types of, yes, yeah, three types of the immune uh, tumors. And what about the B and C? So C is not easing, this is about the protein, right? So this is about the protein. And the person get A, and the person gets C. And change B. Uh, I don't really understand. Um, how filtering is working? Uh, so the genes using here is it's just copy and paste from from the genes on this table. What is the last one in here? Is there any is there any criteria or any threshold interesting mm. interesting. Okay, so uh, as far as I understand, the plot is basically count the number of genes containing in the table. So the rate is basically containing the number of the occurrence of the gene on here. And the gene is actually containing the number of SNPs is referring in this analysis, right? So it doesn't really mean that whether that is um, indicating hot tumors or cold tumors or warm tumors. It's just um, counting all the entries used in these tables. I might be wrong, but uh, I mean, this is the thing I can read from here. Okay, interesting. Oh, go away. Okay, so let's see. The next one. Okay, so this portfolio is about the correlation between mixed class and the genes related to, with uh, SOX2. Uh, it's good, the contents containing in here. So table of contents, introduction, data exploring, visualization, discussion, reference, that's good. Uh, in most case, uh, when you do table of contents, it's normally put the uh, the separate page. So, I mean, it's okay to put in the uh, next page, it's alone. Okay, introduction. It's good. According to report, the number of new lung cancer patients, uh, the, okay, so good. But, um, I mean, I don't really point out the uh, season's writing, but for your information. Um, so all the data set you use in here is basically use the international data set. So referring the statistics from Korean data set is not matching to um, you know, this writing. I mean, it doesn't really in the evaluation criteria for, for, for your uh, writing. And also um, surprisingly, Almost all students are really familiar with how to write or how to cite the reference, right? So in your case here, so it's fine. So what I mean is when you do citation, when you do citation, 
let's say you you're writing like this and what is the, this paper so let's go to here and ah oh, great um okay <laughs> interesting <laughs> The first one, um, I don't know uh, whether you learned this, you know, how to do citation in uh, academic writing, at least the university level. Um, the first thing you have to remember, you have to keep in mind, don't cite, paper, don't cite newspapers, don't cite internet <clears throat> references, right? I mean, this is the basic, right? So, um, the problem is, uh, of course, in a professional writing, we don't cite the newspapers. That's the first thing because the newspapers, not really the knowledge create in a first hand. It's the, it's sort of produced information. So reference is basically citing something that proposed the first or proposed in a novel way, right? Newspapers is the media that delivering some information produced by reporter. So in that case, we're not really citing these newspapers into the professional writing. That's the first one. And the second issue is more serious. Uh, Korean news medias are really uh, bad in terms of uh, bad citation. So if you read the papers like, you know, like this, okay, let's, let's, let's go to here. So why I'm so, you know, upset with this situation. So um, this is a newspaper. Um, I mean, I mean, it's written in Korean. So, I mean, I, I'll explain anyway in Korea. 자, 여러분, 그, 여러분들, 어, 그, 그 대학교에 와가지고 과제를 쓰실 때, 제가 기억을 하기로는 아마 1학년 때 여러분들 뭐 자정진인가? 글쓰기 수업에서 그 레퍼런스 다는 거 배우셨을 텐데요. 그 뭐지? 뉴스 기사나 인터넷 링크는 레퍼런스로 다시면 안 돼요. 근데 이, 이게 뭐 이학생 뿐만 아니라 되게 많이 다들 실수를 하기 때문에 어, 다시 한번 얘기를 하겠습니다. 그뭐 이게 뭐 감점 삼이거나 그런 건 아니고 여러분들 나중에 이제 직장에 가거나 뭐 취직하거나 아니면 뭐 연구소에 가시면 레퍼런스를 달 일이 있겠죠. 그죠? 참조 문헌을 달 때가 있을 텐데 그럴 때는 인터넷 기사나 아니면 인터넷 링크를 다시는 게 아니에요. 그 요즘에 뭐 사람들이 그런 얘기 하는데 뭐그 이런 글쓰기를 할때뭐 위키피디아나 뭐 나무 위키 같은 거를 인용하는 그런 학생들이 있다. 근데 그게 사실 아 우리 학교 수준에서도 그런 일이 일어날까 라고 생각했는데 다행히 아직까지 나무 위키는 보지 못했지만 기사를 인용하는 학생들이 거의 매년 있긴 있거든요. 근데 기사를 인용하는 건안 되고 그렇게 된다고 가르치는 수업 이면 저는 그거는 잘못됐다고 생각을 하고 인용의 목적은 뭐냐면 어떤 새로운 지식을 발견한 거에 대한 그 원래의 의미를 전달하기 위한 자료를 링크하는 게 참조 문헌입니다. 그렇죠? 그러니까 이런 대부분의 인터넷 기사들은 다른 정보들을 짜집기를 해가지고 들어가는 경우들이 있기 때문에 이거 자체가 참조 문헌이 될 수가 없어요. 그래서 이거를 여러분들 기억을 하셔야 되는데 더 심각한 문제는 뭐냐면 제가 이걸 얘기하고 싶어서 한국말을 다시 얘기를 하는 거예요. 그렇죠? 여기서 이렇게 보시면 이렇게 기사를 썼어요. 이 사람 심지어 의학 전문 기자입니다. 근데 이렇게 기사를 보시면 막 숫자랑 이렇게 나오고 이런 자료들이 나오죠. 근데 여기에서 참조문헌이 없어요. 되게 충격적인 겁니다. 이게 이, 이, 이 기자분도 정말 공부 많이 하시고 아마 좋은 학교 나오셨을 겁니다. 근데 기본적인 글쓰기가 안된 사람이에요. 그러면은 기사 같은 거쓸 때도 참조 문헌을 달아야 되냐? 다셔야 됩니다. 당연히 달아야 돼요. 여러분들 제가 그, 그 슬랙 채널에도 남겼지만 미국의 유명한 그런 저널들, 특히 과학 매체들 보시면 뭐 스탯이라든지 아니면 뉴욕커라든지 이런 데 보시면 만약에 예를 들어서 여기서 뭐 지난해 뭐 이렇게 몇 명이 넘었다. 그러면 요거를 제시한 이 숫자에 대한 참조 문헌이 들어있어요. 근데 이거를 왜 이렇게 공부를 많이 하신 기자님이 이런 걸못 썼냐? 못 배웠기 때문입니다. 대학교 때 이런 걸안 가르쳤기 때문이에요. 우리나라의 언론이 이렇게 돼 있기 때문에 계속 언론들끼리 서로 이거를 하고 그러니까 공부를 많이 하고 좋은 대학에 나온 사람들이면 뭐예요? 이게 자료가 계속 이런 식이니까 이걸 어떻게 믿어요? 이게 이 사람들이 이렇게 나왔으면 이 어디서 어디서 얻은 자료야 이거를. 그죠? 
그리고 여기서 교수가 무슨 얘기를 해? 이 교수가 얘기한 게 답이 아니라는 거죠. 이 교수가 얘기를 해도 이 얘기가 진짜 맞는지에 대한 레퍼런스가 있어야 돼요. 그러니까 우리가 기본적으로 글쓰기를 여러분들이 하실 때는 당연히 동료평가가 된 자료들에서 여러분들 보시는 그러니까 과학 논문이라든지 그죠? 아니면 정말로 어, 그잘 정돈된 그런 레퍼런스를 여러분들이 넣으셔가지고 글을 쓰실 필요가 있습니다. 이 훈련을 하셔야 됩니다. 그쵸? 그리고 또한 가지는 만약에 이, 이거 같은 경우에 그렇지 않지만 사파식 페이퍼 이렇게 레퍼런스 단다. 근데 제가 생각했을 때 이것도 아마 그 자정진 수업 글쓰기 때 배웠을 것 같은데 이렇게 들어가죠. 그죠? 예, 이렇게 들어갑니다. 그죠? 그리고 콤마가 여기, 아, 마침표가 여기 들어가요. 그죠? 근데 왜냐하면 왜 제가 이 얘기를 하냐면 어떤 학생들 이렇게 쓰는 경우도 있었어요. 그죠? 이, 이거와 이거는 다른 거예요. 그죠? 이제 요거, 요거를 여러분들 꼭 기억을 하셨으면 좋겠습니다. 어차피 저랑 다시 뭐 이런 글쓰기를 하실 일은 없겠지만, 네, 나중에, 여러분들 나중에 어디 가서 글을 쓰거나, 그, 뭐, 레포트 같은 걸또 쓰실 일이 있으면, 요, 암 사망률 1위, 폐암, 환자 10만 명 넘어, 요 정보를 담고 있는 한국인의 논문이 분명히 있습니다. 그거를 꼭 사용을 하시기를 바라겠습니다. 아시겠죠? Okay, so uh, back to the uh, back to the portfolio. Okay, so uh, among several types of lung cancers, this paper uh, Delas, uh, not Delas, deals with um, lung squamous cell carcinomas, which has difficulty in targeted therapy, and five subtypes. Ah, okay, so this is fine. This is fine. So um, some of some of the references you can put the comma between the era and the 2012 one. So, I mean, this is great. This is well done. And the next class, blah, blah, blah. And, okay. So that was the background and information about the SOX2. Okay, so what this paper will do, analyze whether the factors affecting SOX2 related to mixed class. Okay, that is clear. This paper will discuss whether it's possible to suppress the mixed classes by adjusting factor related to SOX2. Okay, that is good. Importing data set, and that is the table one and table two, and that was the uh, information. And of course. Okay, so selecting the subtypes first. And selecting the uh, clinical information and SOX2 uh, status. And also get the expression of SOX2 from the table 2. Okay, and put it into the long format. That is great. Okay, so what this person want to do is get a, a SOX2 genotype information by um, the copy number amplification and also get a, a tumor um, subtypes and also get the SOX2 expression. That is good. Okay, SOX2 amplification and versus nothing and SOX2 associated genes. Okay. So SOX2 associated genes, how that person define Sucks two. So these genes sucks two. Okay, so I had to go to NMC two. Mm -hmm. It takes a while, so between that, we can just read the things. So these are the genes picked by um, uh, correlation. And then, SOX2 gene expression, and which genes are also correlated with other uh, genes. So that is the one. Okay, so from the expression files, that is good. Ah, sorry, the copy numbers, right? Copy numbers. 
Okay, so what this person get, not really expression, it's about the copy numbers, okay, copy numbers. Yeah, it's a little bit, um, insufficient. So uh, let's say we, we know the amplification information and that is of course the sucks two copy numbers you get from this table will be higher, right? So this is what we see here. So this is the definitely the thing. And then this KDM3A EZ jet EZ H2, KDM 1A, all of these are copy numbers as well. So what is the logic to get that information? Um, KDM 1A. Is that the, is that the random genes? Or is that the gene mentioned in the text? What is that? The KDM. KDM. Go away. Okay, so KDM 1A mentioned in here. What about the, oh, okay, so other genes too. So EZH2, so mentioned on here, right? Positive correlation of the genes. Okay, so definitely um, the, the students wanted to look at whether the copy numbers also has the correlation with this. Okay, that's fair. But I would do, um, I'll look at the expression correlation too. That would be much better um, layers um, in addition to copy numbers, right? But otherwise, uh, the data is fine. Um, and also, let's look at some modifications. So quite lots of students done this way. So first one is um, look at the x-axis here. And no one can read this axis, right? So what what this happen? So students should ask the questions about how we remove X axis um, text, if you want to remove this one in your figures, right? But surprisingly, <laughs> I mean, none of the students ask this question as far as I remember. And surprisingly, uh, quite many students, I think more than 15, they get these types of um, ticks into your plots, right? But this is definitely no good, right? So you have to you have to remove these ticks uh, in a ggplot uh, parameter. And also, what about the uh, y-axis? It's about the copy number, but it's not really copy number. It's about the genes, right? And this is the copy number, right? So this y-axis is the gene, and you can you should put the uh, x-axis title, which is the samples, right? But you don't have to put the sample ID, just the sample. Then we see each each cell represent the samples, right? Okay. So what is the differences between figure two and figure one? Figure one is mixed type by SOX2 amplification. And, ah, okay, so this is the figure one. And this is the figure two. Not really clear. Figure one start from here and figure just below the text. And figure two has the text here and figure is here. Hmm, interesting. Really interesting. Okay, and this question. Okay, so to... The person expect negative correlation with check one. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, so let's look at the next portfolio uh, by Young Il. Ah, okay, let's look at, let's close everything. Okay, so let's look at this one. Uh, comparing the NSD3 FGFR1 more efficient target seem less methylated in cancer and suggest new targets for um, L SCC immune subtype diagnosis. Okay, so it's good. But suggests right. It, it has to be S on here. Okay, so the layout looks good. I mean, layout is really neat. So everyone wants to read it, right? So that is good, and it's also good. The first one is abstract, and first and two is important genes. Second one is exploring data, and what is the third one? The Third one here. Third one here is the research. Okay. And the last one is the discussion. So, I mean, it's good. So, it's really neat. Everyone can find that information easily. So, what this person want to do? So, blah, blah, blah. And the visualization of coding. I found some high rate protein for change. Change new target. I found this gene from him map. Okay, that is good. Show highest standard deviation of full data. Okay, so that is really good starting point. This is because pin 3 gene is locus on X chromosome. Okay, interesting. However, after analyze additional pin 3 methylation data with gender, I found that a I is has to be capital, right? Don't have to be humble. In a male patient, pin 3 showed great deviation, whereas female patient does not. Ah, interesting. Ah, very interesting. Ah, I again. <laughs> interesting. Conclude this data by comparing cancer type pin 3 methylation by gender he met. This shows that in male patients, only warm tumors show highly methylated stage. Okay. Very interesting um, question. So, uh, FGFR1. And NSD3, spin 3. So what this person do, which data load, uh, second table, and uh, S2H, what is the S2H? Year, uh, methylation data set, okay, that is good. Two methylation, thinking about the paper, thinking about the paper, right? According to the paper, they suggest that NSD3 seems better target for treatment, not FGFR1. Okay, let's see how they differently methylated. Okay, so quantize. So let's look at the data first. So cancer is this color, NAT is here. And so here in NAT, so cancer definitely has higher methylation. So this is really good take because cancer tissues, cancer cells always um, are mostly higher methylate than um, the normal tissue because of the, um, the gene expression changes. And what about the FGFR1 and SD3 by cell type? So cancer and NAT, this is more like, um, it's not really like cell type, it's more like a, um, tissues, right? Cancer tissue and uh, normal tissue, right? Because in a cancer tissue, there are many different cell types, right? So that case, I also see differences here, but cancer has much higher deviation. Okay. So, uh, visualize methylation, so it is good. Use the comment proper way, FGFR1, get that information, that is fine. And use the table S7A, what is the S7A? On this one, 7A, differentially abundance of proteins in tumors. Okay, so differences. So choose the protein with the higher 
uh, alteration, right? Differentially, highly differentially expressed proteins. Okay, so candidate genes. Okay, I want to see the next one. So target gene methylation. Okay, so this is all neat axis, and this has to be gene, and this is the methylation, and what is the y-axis? Let's see what uh, what these plots included. Uh, plot. The T-A-R-M, T-A-R-M, what is the T-A-R-M? It's methylation, N-A-T, only uh, calculate standard deviation of target genes, distribution of target genes. Okay, so this one seems to be the deviation of methylation in NAT, right? And the second one is by gender. Okay, some of the male patients has really higher um deviation of uh, spin-3 methylation. And there is also a higher value on here. Which value? This one is the correlation coefficient or just the value. Uh -huh. Where is it? This is the spin-3 met hat. Cancel type and value. And there is the map. And the map is ah, table six B. Okay. Okay, so that is the enrichment type. Okay, so this is by each group, right? So that is the amount of that uh, methylation by groups. Okay, so that is good. So um, I think the way um, the students draw the conclusion from the codes and data uh, looks fine. Um, and also interpretation is really interesting. And also high deviation of methylation is something, I mean, it's really intriguing idea we can look at further. Uh, one one thing I might have some argument is, you know, if you look at the number of, you know, female patients in this data set, it's probably quite less, right? So what they mean is if you have, you know, very small number of, you know, subjects when you, when you draw the deviation, it's always not, you know, large deviation as you expected, right? So if you include more female cases in this data set, you might see some deviation like this because this deviation pattern probably formed by um, very small number of patients rather than, you know, it's a true deviation. So that, that would be my um, argument. And also uh, another uh, limitation we can think about is uh, LSCC, like this cancer type is, is mostly happening in males and smoking uh, person. So we always limited uh, to get more number of uh, patients about females, right? So that's, uh, that might be another possibility, but I mean, I think this is really interesting idea and also quite large deviation we can see in this gene compared to others. So itself is really interesting idea. I mean, I really intriguing whether the spin three is the function. What is the dysfunction? Ah, ah, okay. So it's the spindle family. So. This is about, uh, I think it looks like it's working in a mitosis, if I understand correctly. Uh, what is the function? Because on X chromosome, it has some um, proteins working on a cell cycle. In the... In 
थे Let's look at the what they're doing. Oh, okay. It's actually look working at the DNA transcription. Okay, so it's pinned it. And it has to be working on a male specific haploid insufficiency. Pinder free or the methylation. Three. Ah, there are some information. Okay, other things too. Spin three is also working in the things too. Ah, okay. It's really cancer prognostic markers. Okay, seems to be very important gene. Okay, what about the lung? Okay, it's mostly expressed in endothelial genes too. Okay, so I think it's definitely an uh, interesting idea to follow up. Okay, and also this question. Parts good. Um, the uh, the only things we can uh, add is updating the um, the reference style to here, as we discussed previously. Otherwise, it's good. And and also the reference the the way you put the reference. So if you go here, let's click. Um, ah, okay, so this is all about the web link. Okay, so that's fine. I mean, this is all. I mean, credible uh, web link, but for the papers, you have to put in a um, citation style. Okay, so that is fine. Um, okay, let's look at one more thing. So it's by uh, Saul, uh, also by NIT, about the uh, data format and introduction. Let's look at what the person want to do is about the microenvironment uh, and also some immune checkpoint um, drug development. Nice review in fifth paper, uh, fifth page. What the person want to do is okay. Aim, uh, okay, it's clear. Show the tendency of regulation of various pathway by tumor type in a heat map visualization method. Regulation of pathway, okay, by map. Regulation of gene protein in various pathways by tumor type using geom point visualization method. Check whether the pathways are immune related or cell cycle related. Suggest the target for treatment by tumor type. Okay, so let's look at the, the figure first. Okay, so first figure is the gene up-down regulation by tumor type. And this is the pathway, and this is probably, can't see, I cannot see this one clearly. Let's zoom in. Um, geez. Okay. Up I mean, it seems like up regulation. Uh, maybe. And warm tumor, up regulation, hot tumor, down regulation, warm tumor. Oh my God, my eyes is just um burning. Down regulation, hot tumor. <laughs> okay. So pathways, hot tumor, down regulated, up regulated, and warm tumor up regulated. It's compared to what? It's probably cold tumors, right? Compared to what? Okay, use, use in here. Okay, compared to cold tumors, okay. Then what is the regulation? So regulation parts in here. And upregulated genes. 
and upper region. What is the A? Gene up, down. Okay, so just gene up, down also from the data set. M6A S61. C1. Here. Okay, so use this table to make um portfolio. Uh, and C22. This is the warm tumor compared to code. A warm tumor compared to code. And this is the protein. And this is the genes. And this is the rank, I guess, p-value ranking. Uh, okay, so uh, now I get what the person want to show. So this individual points represent the gene. And this is the distribution of the p-value in a pathway. And this is the line below the n 0 0.05. Okay, so this, I don't think this is a good um, way to represent the information because the first one is we don't have, we don't get any information from this figure, right? The only information we can get from this figure is whether p-value uh, calculate correctly or not. So when you see those questions, we normally put the distribution of p-value like this, but it doesn't really telling anything about the biology you refer in your uh, in your questions, right? I mean, we, we definitely know that information. And also, one more thing is, um, we, when you, when you, when you plot the p value uh, on a uh, on on the figure, we normally put the minus log ten p value on here. The reason is the p value distribution itself is really biased towards zero or one. So when you make a plot, when you make a distribution, the p value is really stacked up within this range. So if you wanna represent you know, the comprehensive um, range, you always has to use minus log 10 and put it into the reverse way. So how we can get that information? So when you read the papers in here, so if you look at the scales on here, so when we discussed last time, when you use the zero to something on the old ratio, we put the log two because we want to make a symmetrical uh, information. Likewise, minus log 10 p-value also used in this way too. So what I want to tell you is when you, when you read the scientific papers or when you get a new information, you always think about the comparison. So what I want to do is what we want to get. Right, so some of the students uh, ask me, you know, reading scientific papers as a undergraduate student is hard because all the new terms coming into uh, the papers and we didn't really learn from the textbook or in the classroom, right? But the problem is that if you learn every situation for the papers, you're not gonna end up in a 20 years, right? Because all the scientific outcomes like a paper's presentation or software is, it has defined their own rule. So what you have to do is you get a, you, you get a coherent uh, knowledge out of these papers and you have to apply those concepts in your situation. So this is more like a, um, re require you how you adapt the new information, how you flexibly change that uh, your understanding into the new format, right? So when you draw these kind of plots, you have to think about that. What about put the minus log 10 on a p-value, like why is I reading this paper? You have to change, you have to try the new things and see whether that looks better 
than your previous triage, right? So this is the things, um, I mean, we also uh, keep in mind in your things. And, and also so many plots on here uh, because we, in an introduc instruction, we say two figures you use in uh, your portfolio, right? Okay, so this is the same uh, thing. Uh, Okay, before we move on to the next portfolio, we almost um, run out of the time. So we will continue to discuss in a classroom together, then see what we can improve in your portfolio. Uh, before we end up, I, I, I mean, I uh, repeat the message in Korean. Uh, 여러분, 그, 여기서 제가 그, 일단 두 가지가 큰 노티스인데, 일단 첫 번째는 어, 인스트럭션에 저희가 두 개의 피규어를 하기로 했는데 그 학생들이 <웃음> 되게 놀랍게도 <웃음> 플러 이 포트폴리오에 되게 많은 피규어를 넣은 학생들이 있어요. 그쵸? 그래서 인스트럭션을 왜안 읽을까? 어? 그죠? 한 공지한 지가 두 달이 넘었는데 왜안 읽을까? 어떻게 하면 읽을 수 있을까? 어떻게 하면 읽게 만들까? 저는 또 이런 고민에 빠졌습니다. 인스트럭션이 너무 길어서 그런가? 아니면 너무 어려워서 그런가? 라는 생각을 좀 했어요. 그래서 뭐 이런 거는 여러분도 이제 저랑은 이, 이렇게 하는 건 마지막이니까 뭐 저랑은 다시 만날 일이 없겠지만 여러분 나중에 뭐 다시 듣지 않는 이상은 근데 뭐 어, 인스트럭션을 좀잘 확인하자 이거는 그래도 여러분들 이제는 좀다 크신 분이기 때문에 좀 확인하셨으면 좋겠고 두 번째는 뭐냐면 여기서 보시면 그 학생이 피밸류를 이렇게 0부터 1까지 이렇게 넣었잖아요 근데 피밸류는 보통 그전 여러분들 논문에서 꼼꼼히 읽어 보셨으면 아시겠지만 마이너스 로그 10 피밸류로 보통 이렇게 넣습니다. 그렇죠? 이렇게 넣으면 피밸류라고 하는 건 대부분 0이랑 1 사이에 이렇게 분포를 했기 때문에 이게 잘 퍼져 가지고 보기 쉽게 어 시각화를 할 수가 있어요. 그래서 마이너스 로그 10 피밸류를 넣습니다. 그럼 이거는 이제 제가 기술적인 설명이고 그 학생들 중에 이제 이렇게 생각할 수도 있어요. 아, 교수님 이거 뭐 제가 배우지 않았는데 어떻게 알수 있을까요? 이거 뭐 학부생인 저로서는 너무 어렵습니다. 이렇게 생각할 수도 있습니다. 좀 그런 비슷한 얘기를 학생들이 했어요. 어 사실 저의 항변을 먼저 얘기를 하면 우리가 이 여러분들 논문을 읽으실 때뭐 여러분 굉장히 많은 시간이 걸렸겠죠. 어 근데 뭐가 있냐면 여기 과학 이런 논문에서 나오는 내용들 뭐 예를 들어서 이 X축이 뭐고 Y축이 뭐고 뭐 무슨 용어는 뭐고 이런 것들을 하나하나씩 다 가르치면 거의 대학교를 한 20년씩 다니셔야 돼요. 무슨 얘기냐면 이 과학 연구를 할 때는 어떤 기본적인 포맷들이 있긴 하지만 그 포맷들은 사실 계속 가변적이고 그 연구자들이 사용하는 방식들이 다 존재하기 나름이에요. 그래서 여러분들이 그 정보를 빨리 파악을 해가지고 응용을 할 수가 있어야 됩니다. 그쵸? 그래서 중요한 건 뭐냐면 아주 기본적인 개념들 우리가 당연히 배워야죠. 뭐 NGS가 뭐다, 뭐 뮤테이션이 뭐다, 뭐 포스폴레이션이 뭐다 이런 것들은 당연히 배워야 되고 이게 수업들에 저희가 했었던 얘기들이기도 했어요. 그런데 정보를 찾아가지고 빠르게 읽고 이 정보가 뭘 의미하는지를 파악하는 거는 사실은 본인 스스로가 하셔야 될 부분이에요. 그죠? 근데 제가 전에도 얘기했지만 이 과제를 낸 지가 한두달 정도가 지났는데 논문을 빨리 일찍부터 읽기 시작을 해가지고 그 질문 앞에 익스포즈 된 사람들, 질문을 만들어내는 사람들 별로 없었어요. 그죠? 반대의 경우로 얘기를 해볼게요. 이런 논문을 읽으면 저도 당연히 읽을 때 새로운 용어나 새로운 표현 방식들이 계속 등장합니다. 저도 몰라요. 저도 이런 것들을 다 처음 보는 겁니다. 근데 여기서 만약에 어떤 용어가 나왔다, NAT 이런 용어가 나왔다. 그러면 구글에 찾아보고 내가 이해한 게 맞는지를 비교해보고 하는 거예요. 그쵸? 그래서 이런 식의 논문들이나 이런 식의 지식들을 배우는 건 그래서 계속 토론하고 질문할 수 있는 자리가 필요한 겁니다. 그쵸? 제가 예전에 수업 시간 때도 그런 얘기를 했지만 그 제가 슬랙에 이런 얘기 쓰지 않았어요? 여기다 제가 그런 얘기 썼는데 다시 한번 같이 봅시다. 이거, 근데 이거를 여러분들이 이해를 못하면 진짜 어려워요. 요, 요, 이 애널리스트가 있어요. 요거 증권회사에 다니시는 이 서강대 경제학과가 졸업하신 분인데 이분은 경제학과 졸업한 사람이잖아요. 근데 이 사람은 2차 전진가 아무튼 철강인가 이공계 쪽 그런 그 주식 투자 보고서를 만드는 사람입니다. 
그러니까 당연히 경제학과 출신이니까 무슨 뭐 돈이나 뭐 주식이나 이런 건잘 아시겠지만 이 사람이 2차 전지나 이런 그런 논문을 읽고 실제로 최근에 동향이 뭔지를 요약해서 해요. 그럼 이 사람이 공대를 이중 전공했냐? 그렇지 않아요. 여러분들 이 사람도 마찬가지로 2차 전지나 이런 논문들을 계속 읽으면서 자기가 자기 지식들을 만들어 가는 겁니다. 그렇죠? 여러분들 대학에 오시면 어 이렇게 하나하나 고등학교 때처럼 공부할 수 있는 것들이 없어요. 근데 이게 되게 아, 학생들이 들으면 아, 좀 어렵고 난해한 말이다. 근데 사실 정말 시간이 많이 지나서 제가 생각을 해보면 그 새로운 지식들을 빠르게 조합하고 자기 걸로 흡수하는 사람들 그리고 그 중간중간에 부끄러워하지 않고 겁을 내지 않고 질문하는 사람들이 결국에 빠르게 성공합니다. 네. 이거를 여러분들 깨닫지 못하면 안 돼요. 여러분들 수능 준비할 때나 여러분들 학종 준비할 때처럼 학원에서 A는 A다라고 가르치는 거를 외우는 식으로 공부를 하시거나 